Picture this. What if the military had selected the YF-23 back in 1990 as part of the Advanced Tactical Fighter, ATF, program? What would these sixth-generation fighters look like today? The irony is striking. Despite officially losing to the Lockheed prototype, the concepts brought forward by the Northrop team in the YF-23 didn't just survive, they ultimately triumphed, just with a three-decade delay. Stealth thermal camouflage, cutting-edge aerodynamics, all of these eventually became standard practice rather than experimental features. And now we're witnessing the resurrection of many of these innovations in the most ambitious military aircraft of the 21st century. Today, we'll explore why the YF-23 was dubbed the aircraft from tomorrow and how it managed to secure a second chance in next generation configurations. To truly grasp how Northrop was thinking decades ahead, you need to examine what the YF-23 represented. Conceived in an era when digital design was just gaining traction and aerodynamics faced severe budgetary constraints, the YF-23 appeared like an extraterrestrial craft among conventional combat fighters. It was a menacingly silent aircraft, featuring an elegant V-tail and minimal thermal signature. Its air-to-air -air combat doctrine centered on stealth, velocity, and survivability, echoing another equally celebrated Northrop project, the B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber, unveiled shortly before the ATF program's conclusion. In 1988, the YF-23, alongside its competitor, the YF-22 from Lockheed, was engineered to replace the McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle Fighters, becoming an effective counter to the advanced fighters of the not-yet-collapsed Soviet Union, the Su-27 Flanker and MiG-29 Fulcrum. Northrop managed to adapt swiftly to the ATF program's growing emphasis on stealth technology. As early as 1981, a small team of engineers working on the B-2, led by Robert Sandusky, began actively developing concepts for a stealth fighter. Sandusky would later become Northrop's ATF chief engineer, and his colleague, B-2 stealth engineer Yu Ping Lu, would be brought on as chief scientist in 1985. The outcome of this dynamic partnership's efforts were three primary design concepts. The Agile Maneuverable Fighter, AMF, featuring two canted vertical tails and the superior aerodynamic characteristics of all three variants, but with limited stealth capability. The Ultra Stealth Fighter, USF, which prioritized maximum stealth by aligning edges with just four radar cross-section facets, nicknamed the Christmas tree for its wing configuration. The High Stealth Fighter, HSF, which balanced stealth and maneuverability with its diamond-shaped wings, flush engine exhaust nozzles, and fully articulated V-shaped rudder vators, also called butterfly tails. First unveiled in 1983, the HSF borrowed extensively from the B-2's design to minimize its vulnerability to radar and infrared detection. Later, Lou's expertise in radar signatures and aerodynamics enabled the team to develop crucial design elements for the future fighter. A distinctive nose configuration with pronounced chin edges, later dubbed the platypus, and a canopy with continuously curved Gaussian surfaces. By 1985, the HSF had evolved into an airframe virtually identical to the future YF-23, achieving the optimal balance between stealth and aerodynamics. The cockpit was positioned high near the aircraft's nose for enhanced visibility, and that same platypus significantly improved high angle of attack characteristics. The YF-23 received tricycle landing gear with nose landing gear, two main landing gear, and a remarkably impressive weapons bay situated in the lower fuselage section between the nose and main landing gear. It featured two turbofan engines, each housed in separate nacelles, with S-shaped ducts to shield the engine's axial compressors from radar waves on either side of the fuselage's upper centerline. The YF-23 incorporated single expansion ramp nozzles, CERN, where like the B-2 Spirit, Engine exhaust passed through troughs in the aft deck lined with heat-absorbing tiles to protect the exhaust from detection by infrared-guided missiles. These tiles were constructed from a porous material called lamelloy and were cooled by evaporation from engine bleed air to dissipate heat. Unlike the YF-22, the YF-23 didn't employ thrust vectoring. The engines and aerodynamics of the Northrop prototype were engineered to minimize drag at transonic and supersonic speeds enabling efficient cruising at velocities exceeding Mach 1.5 without afterburner usage. During testing, the YF-23 once again demonstrated its exceptional performance 
by being quieter and faster than the YF-22, achieving superior supersonic cruise speed, lower radar signature, and overall representing a more mature aircraft. However, the U.S. Air Force selected the YF-22 partially due to its greater maneuverability at low speeds. According to numerous experts, pilots, and historians, though, personal preferences and logistical considerations played a much more significant role. So the Northrop project was shell. This is where most stories of ambitious aircraft conclude, but not the YF-23. Since the mid-2020s, it's become evident that the emergence of sixth-generation fighters from the Next Generation Air Dominance Program is gravitating towards solutions first tested in the YF-23. Key stealth design, recessed engines, wing body integration, exotic air intake configurations, no external vertical surfaces, and a smooth thermal profile. All of this is once again coming into focus and is more relevant than ever. Particularly telling is the F-47 concept recently presented by the developer of the American sixth generation fighter, Boeing, whose silhouette almost directly references the YF-23. And this isn't just our assessment, but that of Daryl B. Cummings, an engineer listed among stealth pioneers for his role in developing the YF-23 stealth fighter. Speaking about what the F-47 will be like, Cummings acknowledged in an Aviation Week interview that he viewed Boeing's concept as a direct continuation of his work from three decades ago. It definitely has elements of the YF-23. I'm not surprised at all. This is the direction things have been heading for a long time. According to him, when the YF-23 was being developed, engineers had to work at the edge. Flight control systems weren't advanced enough to ensure flight stability without vertical stabilizers. And thermal protection of the nozzles required experiments whose results were unpredictable due to the technological limitations of that era. But today, those constraints have been eliminated. High-speed processors, autonomous stabilization systems, and computer simulations of airflow have made possible what was still just speculation at the height of the ATF program. Simply stated, what was considered risky sophistication at the time is now viewed as nothing short of engineering foresight. And while the NGAD configuration remains classified, Available concepts and interviews with Boeing experts clearly indicate an aircraft devoid of vertical stabilizers, with smoothly integrated wing and body, concealed nozzles, and a geometrically clean silhouette that, in essence, confidently continues the line once established by the YF-23. Some will argue that this is merely stylistic coincidence. We would counter stating that this represents very specific logic. Beyond aerodynamics, the NG-8 concept also follows the YF-23 fighter's philosophy. Rapidly penetrate airspace, eliminate the target, and exit the area without enemy detection. With modern enemy radars and infrared sensors becoming increasingly sensitive, and the battle for air superiority moving into the realm of cybernetics, AI, and passive reconnaissance, stealth is no longer optional. It's a survival requirement. And in matters of stealth, the YF-23 wasn't just a step ahead, but from another era that had finally arrived. Another example of Northrop's idea legacy is the B-21 Raider, a stealth strategic bomber that emerged from the same team's drawing board. Although often considered a successor to the B-2 Spirit, the B-21 Raider actually borrowed more from the YF-23. First, the engine layout. The Raider also has them deeply recessed into the hull. Their nozzles are completely hidden from enemy radars and their thermal signature is minimized. The air intakes are closed from above so that compressor blades aren't visible to air defense. Such solutions were first tested on the YF-23. Daryl Cummings also noted in his interview that the B-21 not only retained the YF-23's heat signature reduction concept, but also significantly enhanced it. Second, the B-21 was designed from the ground up as a digital airplane using virtual design, digital twins, and modular architecture, an idea that also traces back to Northrop in the 1990s, where engineers were limited by the capabilities of the time, but whose bold ideas about stealth, easy repair, upgrade, and scalable design are now reality. And most importantly, the new U.S. strategic bomber embodied the same principle of stealth as the foundation of design, not an additional function laid down by whom do you think, the YF-23, of course. And let's not overlook the joint efforts of U.S. allies, Great Britain, Japan, and Italy, 
to create their own sixth generation fighter within the Global Combat Air Program, GCAP, framework. Despite some geopolitical differences, the objectives are virtually identical. Create a stealthy, network-integrated fighter that remains resilient even in the most intense combat conditions. Here again, we see a painfully familiar form factor. Blade design, emphasis on high-speed propulsion, advanced sensor systems, and flight controls optimized for a design with minimal aerodynamic protrusions. GCAP renderings released over recent years show the same smooth shapes, integrated air intakes, vertical tail removal, and a return to minimalist design. All of this forms the final, truly international recognition of the very architecture that 30 years ago seemed too radical for U.S. command for serial production. What's especially noteworthy is that GCAP, like NGAD, is being developed from the start with the expectation of artificial intelligence control, high degree of pilot task automation, digital cockpit, and built-in situational analysis. Of course, in the YF-23's era, Northrop didn't have such broad capabilities, but their prototype's geometry and design logic already largely assumed the rejection of human as the primary controller. One of the myths that has long accompanied almost all discussions around the YF-23's fate was that it was less maneuverable. In fact, both prototypes had excellent flight characteristics, but Northrop consciously relied not on close combat and dogfighting, but on the first shot from stealth. First look, first shot, first kill. The YF-23 had no intention of fighting the enemy. It wanted to destroy it before it even found it. Today, this vision proves to be as close as possible to what's described as future combat. Hypersonic delivery, multi-spectral reconnaissance, tactical synchronization with drone swarms, sensor fusion, and minimal exposure. An NGAD, B-21, GCAP, for all their differences, think in the same categories as the YF-23. These aren't platforms for duels, they're platforms for domination leaving no chance for the enemy to resist. This is the main achievement of Northrop's YF-23. It didn't become a production aircraft, but it became a thinking model. It wasn't seen in the sky by enemies, but its shadow is clearly visible in the best aircraft built. In what features of new combat aircraft do you see a revival of YF-23 ideas? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.